Hi everyone, welcome back to the Soldiers of Cinema podcast, episode 60. Uh, I'm Colin McFader, and I am joined, as always, uh, by Clark Coffey, and today we are discussing Clark's choice, uh, the 1999 film, Being John Malkovich. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, man. How are you? I'm good. I am good. But I, what is being? What is well? What does I, it mean I, if I, I say I'm good? Uh, of course, sadly, our audience won't get to hear your first take on that intro. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> or perhaps, where, 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 or yeah. maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll edit it in when you, <laughs> <laughs> it, you when you, you were a little rusty and you were trying to find your words and you were like, "Me is Cullen," and then I thought, "Well, how, how appropriate?" Yeah. I mean, you know, like what. Are you really Cullen McFader? Yes, Are you yeah. being Cullen today? Is someone controlling you? Has someone entered a portal in some office building somewhere on the seventh and a half floor? Exactly. It's and just like, you know, someone's yeah, trying to speak through me now. <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah. Excellent. I can't wait. I can't wait then. This is going to be exciting. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um yeah so of a first of all episode 60 woohoo that's like amazing yeah, and uh time. i'm always surprised at how many of these we've done i've just like blows my mind and it's still fun but yeah i picked being john malkovich and uh as we usually do let's kind of dive into our personal experiences with the film i you said you'd seen it before mm-hmm. um obviously we've both watched it again recently so that we can discuss it now but i'm kind of curious to hear a little bit about when you first saw it and kind of what that experience was like and then what it was like now to to watch the film anew and what kind of just your like initial broad stroke impressions were of the film mm-hmm. yeah um so i first i think i first saw it um when i was 18 or 19 so yeah five or so years ago um and i remember you know i watched it with a friend who really really liked it and so i think that always mm. kind of that helps. helps bring you into something right um, yeah and it was i think it was me him um my girlfriend at the time and then uh, somebody else it was like a group of us um, yeah okay and i think he was the only one that actually seen it and I, i'd heard of it for ages i and you watched it on like probably. dvd yeah, or yeah. okay and it was just okay. a, a, probably a dvd or a blu-ray or something okay um and um i remember yeah we were all none of us had seen it except for the one friend but i was familiar with it like i knew of, of it. it you knew, knew of about it, it. Yeah. I knew spike jones i knew charlie kaufman i'd seen other charlie kaufman movies actually um, yeah. and other spike jones movies so i i wasn't unfamiliar with with the movie at all i just had never gotten around to seeing it right um and i think i think i remember you know it it's both you know tonally predictable if you'd seen mm. their other work but also yeah. at the same time there's there's cer- a certain aspect of their work that makes it kind of impossible to predict like you kind of mm-hmm. you can guess if you're you know if you're hearing that that charlie kaufman and spike jones are making a movie together it's like okay i can probably understand what the tone is going to be like scene to scene right Um, now of course time because of that because of their way of making movies there's also no way to predict what those scenes will actually consist of um like there's some really genuinely funny bits in this movie that are just so nonsensical like the the speech (laughs) impediment thing when she's like i "I have no idea and just how flatly she plays that the the receptionist or whatever he calls her the like his like yeah exceptional you know organizer of something or yeah 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 orson bean so flatly is yeah oh man he's great yeah he's great in this film it's one of my favorite performances so well it's interesting you know as you described this i want to like delve into it a little bit more but you yeah because you kind of have had an opposite uh first experience than me because when i first saw this film it was i actually saw it in the theater Mm mm-hmm on release and so this is spike you know obviously spike had done skateboard videos he had done music videos now i hadn't seen any any of his skateboard work but i had seen uh his music videos and actually like you know he was a name like he was a known entity in the music video world unlike most music videos because he had done you know pretty significant work with like the beastie boys who i was a big fan of so i was kind of aware of him and he was maybe one of the more prominent uh, music video directors and mm-hmm. he was also like he was kind of he was young and he was like hipper and you know he was kind of like traveled around in the skateboard world and so really big choices visually too like in, yeah in music videos you can see these like really really kind of and, wild yeah. artistic choices totally and and kind of rebellious in in the way that he directed and what he did and uh Friends so i ass. 
<laughs> which I really wasn't familiar with yeah. uh, at the time, or and I I might have even actually kind of been you know that's that's stupid. I'm not interested in that. But we could talk about that later. But I um, but yeah, it was from his music videos. And then I didn't have any idea who Charlie Kaufman was at this time. This was also his first film. Mm -hmm. So for me going into the film, I mean, I I remember watching the advertisements, right? I remember seeing like trailers and, and promos for it. And I was like, whoa, this like seems so unique. Like this, this seems unlike any film I had seen before. It's premise, mm -hmm. right? The the overall premise and and kind of I was just like, what? You know, and it's I it was just like, okay, wait a minute, Cusack, who's somebody I knew, you know, from way back when he was a, a teen actor, right? Mm -hmm. I've known him as an actor my whole life. And I'm like, wait, he's like this, like, kind of, you know, this this puppeteer, this kind of like down and out puppeteer. And he, wait, he's working on like some weird seven and a half floor that's like a f four and a half foot tall room. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, wait yeah. a minute, they're going yeah. inside of John Malkovich? What? Like, I was mind blown, you know. Yeah, this kind of meta aspect. To yeah, it. so so you kind of saw it backwards in the sense that you went into it and you're like, okay, I, I know what to expect here. Okay, there's good, it's like wackiness is definitely gonna ensue. Ensue. It's gonna be like this big meta experience. Kaufman's mm -hmm. written it, but how did you? So so do you remember what you felt about the film when you first saw yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I I um. I'm not, I have a, another friend, not the friend who showed me this, but I have another friend who's really like, no way loves, you have another. Yeah. I've got more than one. Okay. <laughs> you have another friend. All right, cool. So I just want to make sure one, if we can believe it, there's a second <laughs> breaking news. I'm just um, kidding. I, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he really loves, um, like Kaufman's work. Um, uh -huh. and very much when he was in like film school would like kind of emulate him and write like him and, and yeah. um, this kind of again, I I described it to you earlier as like, you know, they all kind of center on these like sex, just, just sex deprived, lonely men kind of thing. And but what? This very, but, and looking at the funny of that and kind of or the, the humor right. in that. And kind but of when you were, but when you were a kid, when you were younger and you saw mm -hmm. it, like, did you like the, just simply? Did did you yeah, like I mean, it? it? Would you interested in it? Did you think it was like kind of what were your? How did it strike you in that naive? moment of not having seen it before i'm gonna i'm gonna use an odd word and, and i say it was it was surprisingly digestible <laughs> okay like i i think i expected it to be um a little bit more out like there maybe in the air and like you know in the clouds in a way like it was i thought it was gonna be um more philosophical and and which oh. it is i mean it's undoubtedly there's like a lot of yeah. like personal and kind of deep philosophical meaning to a lot of it some of it is potentially yeah we'll discuss that it, yeah. when we get to themes but it's um, like but i think I, that uh just yeah on the basis of i i enjoyed it and i think that i um it definitely i mean i didn't watch it again for i think two years after that yeah and so i've seen it i think th only three times including okay this, this watch um and yeah i think it, it just it's strange i think i've almost had a, a slightly different reaction every time i've watched it but they've always yeah. been like positive i've never okay I've never felt bored so what did you think so so it. now you, you you've seen it recently it's fresh in your mind and you're watching it you know with it with a little more of an analytical bent obviously because we're mm -hmm. you we're discussing it what were kind of your initial like big reactions to it this time i think it's um i mean you 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 actually mentioned this but i i had similar feelings about the fact that it's visually very stripped down yeah, um, which I was surprised about. That yeah, hit me first, like that, and it's like comparing that to again Spike Jones' work as a yeah. like a music video producer, and again you think of like the skateboard video as a genre, and it's very like super fish eye, lots of handheld and cool like crazy yeah. angles and things like that, more avant garde. And, yeah, was... and and this is very you know there's not really like not to I'm not trying to insult or, or demean the movie in any way, but there's not really much going on visually for like 95 percent of this movie <laughs> yeah um, i would agree and i was really surprised by it i and mm -hmm. and look it, it 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 could very i mean obviously these are choices that the director made it's you know so i have to assume these are on purpose of course and so you have to think well this is meant to to kind of mirror or illustrate emphasize the lives of these characters right but it's just this drabness this beigeness this flatness mm -hmm permeates yeah. and I, and so I much of the film it works for the subject like i think that it really 
it works for Kuzak's character and yeah. this kind of bizarre. It almost grounds it in a weird way. Like I feel like you could shoot this in sort mm. of like a Wes Anderson style, which would be, you know, you get to the seven and a half floor and and it's like quirky so cartoon, and almost the cartoon, kind of zany, yeah. And whereas this almost grounds it and kind of puts you again in in Cusack's shoes, who is while he's not a normal guy in this he's kind of odd he is the most normal <laughs> in the movie um and so like you know his reaction to the fact that there's low ceilings and that these people are like oh, i have a speech impediment to i you're very kind to me <laughs> and it's like you know he's always just sitting there and which i think is, is a great great on his part i think he, he does a really good job with the role um, yeah but also really again pairing that with the visuals that kind of ground it and so that's it interesting sort of more recognizable yeah. as like okay this so it's is almost sort of out, of, out of whack yeah you know? so it's almost like like that's an interesting interpretation that it's almost okay visually it's 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 almost mundane uh and i would say that like yeah i mean a lot it's very utilitarian it's very mm -hmm. it, it's not stylistically shot at all uh, with the exception of, you know, the chase scene and the end and near the climax through uh, Malkovich's subconscious, um, where we have some interesting, you know, unique uh, shooting going on there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, like, by and large, it's, you know, even when we're inside Malkovich's mind, it's, you know, the way they treat that is just a very simple POV shot, a little bit of sound design, but it's really... It's it's very very simply done. I think you know maybe mm -hmm. one of the more striking scenes is is when Malkovich is um, talking to all these other different versions of himself. If I'm not mistaken, I think he goes like inside his own yeah, he mind, goes inside right? His own mind. It's kind of like a paradox, <laughs> and, I guess. And yeah. he's in a restaurant. Yeah, and he's in a restaurant, and and, and this it's is actually kind the of Queen Mary in California. That ah the observation it, deck, that's you know? probably at long beach then yeah. and um and he's and 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 it's actually a pretty good uh cgi effect for that era actually pulled it off was, quite yeah, well it was a big combo it was a lot of it some of it was cg and some of it was just the extras masks. wearing masks yep. yeah yeah so it was yeah. a pretty ingenious way of uh doing yeah. it. yeah and and they pull that off very well and i think that was really interestingly stylistically done but yeah i mean and maybe you're right i was just gonna say not maybe you're right i mean it's an interesting interpretation um that you know, it it keeps the film so grounded and it makes the film seem so matter of fact mm -hmm. visually when when the story is so outrageous. And I think that's kind of one of my biggest takeaways was just how I felt like the writing, I don't want to say overwhelms, but I but but it almost feels like like television in the sense that the writer is the primary major creative yeah. force behind a project. Mm -hmm. And 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 usually, of course, the director is the major, you know, primary creative force in a film. And mm -hmm. it almost feels like here we have Kaufman's voice that the writing and his his premise so over. I don't want to say overwhelming because that overwhelming has a negative connotation, but it's kind of influences so substantial. I I well, I think it's just it, the, the, this Kaufman's voice is so substantial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in his script that it just kind of. You know, uh, I don't get a sense as much of who Spike Jones is as a director. You know, the, the yes. things that he, yeah. the personality he shows in his video work before this and even work that he's done since. Now, I know this is Jones' first film, his first feature. And, you know, it's almost like I would have expected something similar to, let's say, maybe like a PTA where mm -hmm. his first couple films, you know, he's really working hard to prove himself. And you've got long, you know, long wonners and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of like dynamic camera movement. And Zooms while dollying. And all yeah, that yeah. Thing. All this kind of, you know, very like lyrical camera and a lot of movement going Super and everything. And, it, yeah. and you almost feel like, right, like Jones would have come from, you know, I, I was almost surprised that he didn't come to that here now i'm not suggesting he should have and maybe it speaks to a confidence that he had to just to you know that the script is there it's solid i'm, I'm telling this story and i don't mm -hmm. need all that fancy stuff because that's kind of where pta came later right when pta yeah. matured as a filmmaker he's and like it's I don't very need to... very uh subdued yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> i don't need to do all these wacky things to prove myself which i actually um, just briefly on pta i i i, yeah. I prefer his more recent work because of that that like kind of minimalist very um yeah. confident in, in yeah like simple setups um i think yeah and so really i'm well. not knocking jones at all 
you know, no, for, for I, his work here. I was I just surprised. Also, it, it, it goes, it really, I think it, another thing about it is that the, again, J- Jones' direction works with the subject matter. Be, like, because you think about it, like, there's not really any, like, magic in the, of course, mm. there's a portal to John Malkovich's mind, but it's played so straight, and, like, yeah. nobody even questions it. Yeah. And, you know, you could have a version of the script where, they land on the top of the Empire State Building when they when they come out of his mind or something. But no, it's the New Jersey Turnpike. Yeah, like it's like, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, so I think that everything is, you take, and I think it's actually quite ingenious in the way it's written because you take this really, really fanciful, crazy, like insane idea and this really bizarre premise, and but you make everything, like you said, mundane. Yeah, you're throwing mm-hmm. out on the New Jersey Turnpike. It's behind a filing cabinet. It's like, <laughs> you know, all these things that are like, he's a puppeteer you know it's like yeah you, you got all these things that that just everything else is so 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 stripped down and mundane that that the you almost are like okay yeah this thing has to be real because or, or like you know that they have monkey like a monkey lives in the house yeah, and, and that like you know it's birds, like and, yeah. and, and the monkey is going through therapy you know mm. or i mean it just the fact that this it's a seventh and a half floor and it's like half the side you know half the 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 uh the root you know the ceiling is like half as low as a regular ceiling so yeah, everybody nobody has to knows stoop and, and <laughs> all of these little like surreal i mean mm-hmm. i i would say they're like surreal twists you know mm-hmm. and i think kaufman has obviously shown that that's you know in, in i've not seen every single one of his films but i've seen many and i feel like you know he has a surreal touch to everything he does you know there's a surreal flavor um which i enjoy i mean mm-hmm. i because it's it's uh, especially in today's day and age with films. I, you know, it's. I think we've said this about other films. I'd be surprised if this film could get made and distributed worldwide. You know, I mean, you know, major, you know, major theatrical release of yeah. a film like this in today's day and age. Sadly, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, apparently, but, New Line was originally going to like that. It was pitched to New Line, and then Robert yeah. Shea said, "Why the fuck can't it be being Tom Cruise?" <laughs> <laughs> was his response right to. right um, why can't it be tom cruise yeah, yeah. I, I i i could see that you know and it's my understanding and i i might have misheard this or misunderstood it but it was my understanding that kaufman wrote it specifically with malkovich in it and that they mm-hmm. really stuck to their guns that they felt it was vital for this for malkovich to be the actor the celebrity that they were going into the mind of and that it wouldn't just work if you switched it out to another to another person and i do have to say i mean i think that it's it's perfect i i'm like now obviously i'm looking backwards at a film that's art but but it's like it would have been a different film had anybody else been used and i think malkovich has just this perfect i don't know you know what i mean he's like like he has this perfect level especially back then of like just it's like actor, John Malkovich, like art. Yeah, like you yeah I don't even know. Is, like, how do like, you define? I know yeah. it's like it's like John Malkovich is just John Malkovich. You know, yeah. it's like I and the and I don't even know. I actually need to look this up because I doubt it had come out. Had it come out yet? His uh, what was that movie where he played that Russian uh, uh, card char- or gambler oh, guy, poker um, dude? Do you remember when was yeah. that? Was, uh, what is that called? Um, it's called Rounders. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So Rounders came out a year before this film. Now, okay, this yeah. is this is where it's like, so you've got Malkovich, right? I just want to go off on a tangent here for a little bit. You've got like, he's in Dangerous Liaisons, right? Mm-hmm. He's in, you know, um, what other films was he in? The in? Line like of Fire. Like he's this real yeah. actor, right? Like he's an actor, actor. And, and then he's in like, Con Air, mm-hmm. <laughs> which Classic is great. Nicholas Cage, and, yeah. and then he's in Rounders. And I and, and and do you remember Rounders? Have you seen it? I've not seen. It. I know it though. I oh, okay, I know. okay. Yeah. So he plays this character named Teddy. T- sorry, Teddy KGB. So, which he's Russian, okay? He's yeah. supposed to be this Russian, like, card shark gambler guy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, poker master, okay? And he's kind of set up as the, I, I, for lack of a better term, like, the, the villain, right? He's, mm-hmm. and he has this Russian accent. After the show, you need to go look it up. But it is one of the most ridiculously, like, I mean... I mean, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful, but it's hysterical. I mean, yeah. it's so over the top. It's so ridiculous. So to me, like him coming off that and being in this film is just 
perfect. It's just yeah, it's perfect. Really fun, yeah. Cause it's not like he's because he's clearly a great actor, but he's also in his own way kind of goofy and kind mm-hmm. of you know what I mean? Like his roles have been kind of colorful. And anyway, I sorry to go off on a tangent here, but no, I thought okay. yeah, I, I thought it was hysterical that yeah. it was John Malkovich. Well, apparently the first like drafts had nothing to do with the idea too of like mm. going into anyone's mind. Right. And that it was just supposed to be written about a guy who falls in love with someone other than his wife. And then... Oh, interesting. That, that like, in the first few scripts, there was, like, a the floor seven and a half came in and things like that. And then it was passed a bunch... Like, passed, you know, passed just gets, Hollywood, turned down. Yeah. And then um, Kaufman sent it to Coppola, who then passed it on to Spike Jones because he was with... He was dating um, Sofia Coppola at the time. Right, right, yep. And that was 1994, I think. So it, it was passed so they've around been for work- a while. And, yeah, because then they eventually got married and then divorced. But and another fun fact is that it on it uh, started shooting on my birthday. So there you go. Ah, my, my very first birthday. So, well, there you go. Maybe your I very John first Malkovich. birthday. As right. they well, say in the movie, you know, when the person's born, you go and that's maybe that's what happened. You get absorbed. You get absorbed. Mm-hmm. So maybe I you was have absorbed some by Spike Jones or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, so so okay, so obviously John Malkovich, he's his name's in the title, but we've got some other interesting performances here. I mean, John Cusack, who again, I'd kind of hinted at, you know, he'd been around for me since I was a kid, and I kind of grew up watching, you know, so many of his roles, you know, like Say Anything, the Cameron Crow flick. I thought he was actually fantastic. Not actually. I mean, it's no actually to it. He was flat out fantastic in in The Grifters, which was a 1990 film. Um, I mean, he's just been around, right? He's been in a million films. I can't even, Mm -hmm. you know, Better Off Dead, which was a a flick from my childhood. Uh, One Crazy Summer, which is another flick from my childhood um, that I loved. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know not many people have seen this, but Tape Heads was a film that I liked when I was a, a kid. Um, so he'd just been around, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and done so many films. Uh, and so by the time he had come to this, you know, I was, it, it was a fun thing for me to see him in, um, in such an interesting role. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he, he, I think his performance is pretty interesting in the film. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and, yeah, and you're definitely. right. I mean, it's very grounded. He plays it very straight there, it, there's all these surrealistic touches, but you know he plays it ex- maybe well. I mean, everybody plays it pretty straight, I think, except for Orson Bean. But uh, but yeah, I feel like his performance is quite good in the film. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I I like Cusack. I, I again, he is. It's almost like the perfect like inoffensive casting for the movie mm. in a way, right? Like that. Yeah. That he's not. Um, like he's it's it kind of perfectly is in sync with John Cus or John Malkovich because you're kind of like oh yeah okay John Cusack yeah like it's not like he, he mm. didn't get like a, a DiCaprio or like Tom Hanks or someone who's kind of, <laughs> you know known for those would be interesting though I I'd like to imagine like uh, Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio in this film I, this. <laughs> I I feel like if if Leo were in this film there'd be a lot more crying yes and screaming yeah. And screaming, crying that and when screaming. when he locks his wife in the cage would be very <laughs> dramatic. And don't get but me no, wrong. But that's I, what I mean. I, I love like, Leo. Yeah. That's why I kind of think that, that Cusack is perfect for this because it's like, even when he seems angry and is like yelling and things like, you still almost get this idea that he's going to say sorry after every single you know, line. And <laughs> well, he, he's really like, yeah. for his character. Yeah, no, I think it really does. And I mean, he kind of almost, it's like, sure, he's filing in a beige you know cubicle farm office building because that's like i feel like that's exactly where he'd be you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think those were a lot of the roles that he played in those movies that i had mentioned where he you know even though these are kind of teen comedies fun films he was always kind of like i don't want to say like the straight man but you know to some extent yeah or he Mm -hmm. was kind of this like slightly outsider slightly kind of disaffected slightly you know um and, and I think it's really unique in that it's like he's like a leading man, but he's like not a leading man, you know. Um, and I and I think it just works perfectly for this film. I think what they do with Cameron Diaz is really interesting too, you know, 
because we we see her here and like and and like everything else that we've almost discussed in the film except for the script it's like so underplayed like they they make her so plain like so mm-hmm. purposely clearly yeah. plain you know she had like been in the mask type, yeah. yeah kind of against type right that's like they hire an actress who is known for her beauty and and uh you know she was in the mask and she was in um Oh boy, now I'm like blinking. What else? She'd been in a couple films, but I think The Mask and then um, There's Something About Mary were the were two big films right before yeah. this. Yeah. And so and so clearly she had like established her comedy chops with There's Something About Mary. Well, and The Mask too, frankly. Um, but yeah, here she she's like got this crazy like wig on and she's like really uh, just under made up, wears like sweatpants and stuff, you know. And uh, her best friend is a little monkey. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that I, I feel like that was an interesting choice to see. And I think at the time, especially people were surprised by that. You know, it's like, well, why in the world did you hire Cameron Diaz then if you were going to yeah, do yeah. this? And it's you know? like you, you almost don't even know it's her. Like it's it's yeah, very interesting. Um, she's and she does a good job. Like she does genuinely a very good job at, at um, you know, again, not she doesn't she she clearly intentionally does not play the type and put a lot of work into not being cameron diaz um, yeah yeah which, yeah I mean, obviously that's acting but but in a way that i think it's it's very fat like it almost takes you a second to go like oh that's cameron diaz like you don't <laughs> yeah, really yeah. realize who it is at the at, the, at first um yeah for sure for sure and i think and, and Catherine keener who you know i don't know that i had i was too aware of her when the film originally came out But I think, like, to me, her character is one of the more interesting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's it's weird because I feel like her character kind of actually has the most arc. Mm -hmm. Um, And not that I think a character has to have an arc, you know, I mean, because clearly, you know, Cusack doesn't change, right? If we follow him through the film, he he doesn't change. Beginning and same thing, yeah. I mean, he he doesn't learn, he doesn't change, and he's literally chosen at the end to, to be absorbed inside of this child's brain only to kind of pine away yeah and and look at his wife have a relationship with somebody else without him right yeah Yeah. he's literally chosen that instead of leading his own life Mm -hmm. and so i don't feel you know i don't get a sense that he's really learned or grown or done anything cameron diaz i feel like um kind of also in a certain sense has kind of stayed the same um Mm -hmm. Or not change very much, but but Catherine Keener, it's like she starts off the film and she's so icy and cold and kind of, or I don't know if icy and cold is the right, but she's just like, sort of you don't you don't get a lot of like empathy emanating or warmth yeah, coming from she's, her character. She's sort of almost only interested in in her own, like very not self preservation, but she's like selfish. Is only, yeah, 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 and and but not she's in like kinda, a malicious way. She just doesn't really no, it's care just, about anything. It's going just on a matter of fact, of her yeah. right? And she's like, "How can we profit off this? I'm gonna, we're gonna like sell tickets to John yeah. Malkovich's mine. You yeah. know, we're gonna profit off of it, or it's like, hey, you know, don't you know? It's just really like you know, very abruptly, kind of like, well, what what can you do for me? Or I'm not into you know. It's just kind of. And by the end, it's like you see her in this real, seemingly like loving, warm relationship mm-hmm. with Cameron Diaz's character. They have a child, you know. I mean, she she so it it honestly, and I was surprised by that. I had forgotten about that actually uh, until I had watched it now. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it just I, I was just kind of surprised. But I think like, but her performance I think is fantastic. Uh, so like across, and we already talked about Orson Bean, who is like hysterical. I think. <laughs> oh God, he's great. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. I, I mean, his performance is almost—it feels like it's almost kind of like tongue in cheek. Like it's like you yeah. know everybody else is playing this so straight, but he's he comes on, and especially when we first meet him in the office for the interview, he's so tongue in cheek, and it's kind of like, like hey, a hey, Monty Python sketch or something. Yeah, 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 it's like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know. Yeah, or when they're when they're trying to like say, "Oh, we'll kill your wife," and then he hangs up up and then he's like oh he called our bluff <laughs> it's like this, this <laughs> yeah yeah bit, yeah man. i mean it's almost like he's in a different movie than the other actors but it works you yeah. know yeah. it still works i just love it i so you know it it's it, but again i just you know so what i now i watched the film and i enjoyed it 
but I'm kind of like scratching my head a little bit at the end, I have to say, mm -hmm. in the sense that, now this is not a bad thing, I think this is a good thing, in the sense that I'm kind of like, okay, what in the world did all this mean? Mm -hmm. Not that I have to have a film, you know, uh, be about anything explicitly at all, I don't. Um, but I am, I'm always kind of like curious, like I wonder, well, what's the director saying? What is the writer saying? Kind of, you know, how do I feel about this? And this was a film that I'm kind of like, I, I really, at least yet, maybe I'll get there, you know, in, in as we discuss it here, but I don't have this like great articulation, like this really articulate explanation of, of what I kind of think or feel about yeah. what the movie might be trying to say. Um, what yeah, are your I thoughts mean, on that? Because it touches on so many things. It touches on celebrity. It touches on, you know, um, identity. Um, like, mm -hmm, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, this idea of like, well, Cusack says in the movie, like this idea of being in someone else's skin. And it's like he's this yeah. guy who can never say the right thing. Right. Like, in that, it literally to a point that every single thing that he says, I want to say for the first like 70% of the movie, it results in something negative consequence like, legitimately yeah. every line like um, everybody responds to him practically except now interestingly that you say it, except for orson bean yeah but even orson Who, who's bean, the, like when you think about how whenever he's the orson beans like comes up to him and is like oh don't you talk to you know her that way and if i was 20 <laughs> years younger i'd, I'd knock your I'd, ears off yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's this like so but but exactly that there's an orson bean is very much i want to say also the only only actor in the movie that's like purposefully playing comedy too like it's yeah. playing for for comedic kind of effect. yeah yeah um but yeah and then well, Mar got, mary and then kate place we, mary a, kate place is, is yes. playing yeah it, yeah they're kind of a duo together but yeah, uh you've got yeah a little bit of a, a yeah um and then but then and then suddenly you've got this character that's yeah again that never says anything right that is completely you know and then he he is transported into the mind of for 15 minutes of yeah. the, um, like, a good actor, a great actor. You know, I, I like John Malkovich a lot. Yeah. But, like, also just kind of, like, the most, like, banal choice of, like... Now, now here's, that, here's what I would have done. Here, here's what I would have done. Here's mm -hmm. what I would have done. Okay, I've just, I'm going to riff on an idea for just a second. Okay? We'll have a, like, maybe we can have a new segment in our in our podcast where it's, like, how would I have done this differently? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm like second guessing Spike Jones and Charlie Kaufman, but just, just let's play a thought experiment. So how cool would have this been if we, you know, we, we have, uh, we have this guy, we have Cusack, he's a puppeteer, which is, it's, it's a hundred percent. It's a, it's a type of acting. It's a performance art. Okay. So very close, honestly, to what Malkovich does. And I think, you know, we explore this in the film a little bit, right? It's kind of meta, and these are actors in a performance already mm -hmm. talking about performance and acting. Um, but when he goes into Malkovich for the for the first time, he he pops in during a take of Malkovich on set for the film Rounders, where he's playing <laughs> Teddy KGB. <laughs> and we can hear the literal like lines from the movie, like where he's in a scene that we recognize from the movie having just come out. And so Cusack gets to like spend, you know, the 15 minutes on set of this major motion picture with Matt Damon sitting right across from him. And they're at the card table and they're playing poker and they're shooting a scene. That's mm -hmm. how I would have done it different. Yeah. And then it's, there's, even a third, there's another layer of, of like meta, you know, he's playing, even Malkovich is playing someone else. Yeah. I mean, no, we could but just, it, that, that should be, that should be, I think we should add that segment to. You like that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, how can we play armchair director, you know, yeah. and, and second guess people's filmmaking, which is not actually my intention at all. I just had, I just had this idea, but, but you know, sometimes it's like, cause you wonder, it's like, I don't know how Kaufman writes, you know, um, and, and I know some, just in my own writing, you know, a lot of times, like some things are, are conscientious, like some things are very conscientious where it's like, okay, I like I'm shooting for some kind of like way to express an idea or a theme. And so, you know, you're, you're reaching for some kind of symbology. And, and a lot of times though, and I think this is maybe when, when the writing's better, 
all of that stuff is kind of subconscious, you know, and it's not a conscientious like goal to, to create or utilize symbology, but rather I, I'm just, it's just kind of like flowing forth from me. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I don't know how Kaufman writes and I don't know if, if his symbology or if his stories are very conscientious and they're methodical and he, you know, or, or if he kind of writes from his subconscious more, I, I don't know, yeah. but maybe, you know, an argument for the latter would be that I don't feel like this film and what it's saying is really easy to categorize. I think if you had 10 people watch it, you'd probably have 10 different interpretations yeah. of, yeah. of what the film is about, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I really like that do, about yeah. this film, you know? I really like this about a film, and I think we've talked before about, you know, especially in the, like, biopic genre where recently we've just had films that so overly simplify, you know, the people's lives or the characters and the stories and it and it just and the and the symbology or, or the themes are so on the nose and you feel like you're being hit over the head as an mm-hmm. audience member being told what to think about what's on screen and so at least for me i i i feel like that's not the case even remotely with hoffman's mm-hmm. films and with this mm-hmm. film as well which i love i wish there was more of that yeah i mean it, like you said kind of just like he throws up ideas without worrying to handhold the audience through like yeah. what his philosophy is which is is refreshing because again like you said a lot of times a movie like, like i think of some movies that you know have come out recently that are very similar in the sense that they're like kind of this like high concept idea and they've got mm-hmm. you know this philosophy to them and yet they just are so on the nose in terms of like what they, like you know as much as we don't like to it's manipulative talk negatively they're manipulative about other movies but the the yeah. the movie um don't look up that just came out last year okay yeah um, i saw was, that which had you know Leo, a lot of people right? really liked but i i found it it was kind of again in the opposite vein of this movie where it's like Again, you've got this high concept. You've got this idea that like an asteroid's coming to destroy Earth, and like how people respond. And yet, it was but so... the concept is so underutilized. It's another. Yeah. I think it's another. I know you're going in a different direction. You're mm-hmm. using it as an example of kind of a preachiness or an on the nose ness. Mm-hmm. It's also yeah. an example since being John Malkovich is also. I think you could argue in a sense. It, I don't know if I'd say it's high concept, but there is a high concept there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, but the film isn't executed. I don't know. Uh, isn't executed exactly like high. Con- uh, maybe it is. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. But but yeah, I'd say I, yeah. The 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 subject matter of John Malkovich's high concept, but the way in which it's like the workmanship behind it is not high yeah. concept. You know, one of the sense. things that I thought about, and I just as I just think this through with you, you know, and mm-hmm. this this is like ninety nine. Now in ninety nine, obviously, like. Celebrity has been a major, you know, people have lived through the lives to some extent of celebrities for decades and decades and decades, right? I mean, mm-hmm. um, and, and certainly in 99, there was, there was already a substantial celebrity culture in this country and in, in Canada where you're at and, and other countries. Mm-hmm. And, but what's interesting is that 99 is kind of the beginning of the internet being available to a wider and wider audience or wider and wider group of users. And, you know, um, because I'm trying to think, I think 94 would have been when I first really used the Internet. And by 99, I think it was quite prevalent or, you know, much more so. And I almost it's interesting where we've gone now with 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 virtual realities or virtual, you know, virtual images or 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 avatars of ourself online right Mm -hmm. and that could be something as simple as like you have a username that's that's not you on twitter or you actually have like a an actual avatar in a video game or what is facebook now what do they call themselves meta is that what yeah yeah Yeah. and and you know and it's trying to like create this entirely like you know synthesized symbolic virtual world where avatars of people will interact with and I think it's interesting, you know, it's one of the things that I really thought of here, and it's maybe it's kind of a superficial thing, but this idea of like, you know, living through someone else, right? 
And obviously, Cusack's character does this in this film, you know, it's, and very consciously goes into this person's life, learns to kind of manipulate and control them, and then uses this this other person's life to achieve their goals and dreams of, mm-hmm. in this case, of being a successful puppeteer, and you know, utilizing the fame that uh, Malkovich already had to do so. Um, it's just very interesting to me how the world has kind of moved on 20 years plus after this film and how so many people live through, you know, uh, either either avatars they've created for themselves in, in a virtual existence online mm-hmm. or live through the celebrity of other people. And uh, I, I just think that's that's intriguing. Um, anyway, it was yeah, just one I of mean, the things the, that I, I thought the... about like you said like celebrity dumb and fandom these days is such a a different place than it was you know even 10 years ago where it's like people have these parasocial relationships with mm. with celebrities that they believe are their friends because mm. they can follow them on twitter they and, can twitter yeah they can on, like you know, tweet they see yeah. their daily life on instagram and it's like it it almost goes along with the whole mm. idea of and you know we're getting not off topic, but very no. Broad this is here, right but, on topic. But the, yeah, this is but right the on. idea that um, you know, like talk shows, um, all kind of are dwindling, and like Conan O'Brien just ended his because he was like, you know, I'm gonna do something a little bit more contemporary, and um, because you, you know, what was the talk show originally? It was this this you know half hour program to get to know a celebrity because you had no other way of, of doing that. Well, and they were they would always normally, it was promotion. Right? It was yeah, an it advertisement. Was, it was it was, it was an ad. It was an ad. And also, yeah. yeah, it was like the only place that you could see, right, a celebrity kind of just like kick back and and have a conversation with someone. It wasn't that you know wasn't a a direct you know necessarily a direct interview about a specific project project or yeah. something like that. Um, right. And now with social media, where I can go on on twitter god forbid or i can go on instagram or (laughs) anything and i can see again i can like literally go and look at kim kardashian's instagram story and see what she's been up to today um and i can Mm -hmm. go and i oh how exciting (laughs) i can go see what john cusack's thoughts on you know the most recent election are right from his own mouth right it's yep yeah yeah so there's this really interesting you know link between this idea that, you know, and it's almost perhaps it's like this predict where it's like, it's funny how overt people are. The guy that's like, that comes in and he's like, oh, you know, Malkovich was my second choice and, and goes in and is super excited. And everyone's like thrilled when they come out of the, on the, the New Jersey Turnpike. Yeah, and, yeah. And I feel like, you know, again, I was I was one years old when this movie came out. but um, Which blows my mind, by the yeah, way. Totally but, uh, blows my mind. I was it, graduated it, it, college. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Um, but it's it's funny how, and I, I assume because it was like this when I was growing up even, that that kind of overt, you know, with very, with exceptions, you know, there was obviously like Beatlemania and there was like people would like pass out at Elvis and Michael Jackson concerts, things like that. <laughs> but in terms of, in terms of yeah. like this celebrity worship that like permeates every single like day-to-day life in every aspect was kind of something that was like exaggerated in this movie. Whereas nowadays, like if you were to reshoot this movie, you would almost think that those people that like are so, you know, almost like have filled with contempt about themselves that they just mm. want to go and live in the, the, the eyes of a, a celebrity, that would almost be too realistic to be like high concept fantasy yeah. in, in yeah. this day and age. Like that, like yeah. think about the idea of going into John Malkovich's head and seeing what he sees through a POV. Like we kind of already get to do that every day now um yeah that's very interesting so. you're right and it's almost like yeah you're, you we do we, we there's it, it's almost like the uniqueness of that right mm-hmm. of that experience is has been reduced because you're right it's like i can go on twitter and you know uh specifically john cusack is there expressing his personal opinions like every five minutes and you're just like, okay, well, I, geez, I'm practically like, you know, <laughs> like I'm in his mind. I mean, obviously you're not, but, but yeah, I mean, the idea of that, I think, you know, I, 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 there are so many interesting like tangents or like interesting ideas that are almost kind of dangled in front of us, but then kind of, 
not done a lot with really that I there's a part of me that thinks that there's more potential than there is actual payoff in this film. But I don't mm -hmm. know how I feel about that. You know, I, I, there's part of me that's like, well, hey, that's OK. It's like it's enough to kind of like to 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 fill up the film with some density and let you kind of mull it over and think about it and 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 have and have more to discuss you don't have to tie everything up in a nice little bow that you introduce into a film, right? And so mm -hmm. I, I guess maybe I'm okay with that, but just one of the things that I'm thinking of kind of spe spe specifically that I actually thought on this rewatch, because I hadn't seen it in so long, was going to be more of a, a part of the film was, so Lottie, you know, the character that the camera Diaz plays, mm -hmm. when she is first, you know, when, when Cusack's character, uh, Craig, uh, introduces her to the portal and they're able to go through, she goes through that and is in Malkovich's mind. Her interpretation of that is kind of like an awakening of a, tra a transgender identity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's explicitly said, like her character explicitly says that. It's like, um, you know, I, I'm going to paraphrase, I can't remember exactly, but it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I realized when I was in Malkovich that I like meant to be a man, I think. Is, is roughly how that goes. But then we don't really see too much more of this. I mean, there is this plot idea about how Catherine Keener's character um, is, you know, um, has a sexual relationship with Cameron Diaz when she's inside the body of Malkovich. Yes. Yeah. And, that, and that's definitely, we continue that on to the point where Cameron Diaz is in a relationship with Catherine Keener at the end of the film. But it's just that's just one kind of interesting thing to me that it's like it seemed so poignant. And maybe that's because now this is such a, a topic uh, in today's world. But um, and probably 20 plus years ago, I would have had less exposure um, to transgender you know, identity issues and things. But it just stuck out to me. I was like, whoa. And then we but we don't go anywhere really with that, I don't think um by the end of the film just kind of one example that stood out to me mm -hmm. but there's a lot yeah. of little things i think like that um in the film and i yeah, guess it's like an infusing of like identity in all kind of forms in, in a yeah way yeah of, yeah. Like, yeah and i guess that's a good way to see is that identity is clearly identity is a huge um is a huge part of this um and it's and and it's interesting too and i don't know that you know the film is clearly not moralizing which i like and i don't think kaufman really ever delves into moralization he just kind of presents things and and you can kind of decide for yourself but it is a little bit interesting that you know it feels so punitive for cusack's character for craig at the end of the film he's in this mm -hmm. prison where he's just reduced to basically pining over a lost relationship and think you know a person he can't have yeah um yeah. inside the mind of you know where it's basically he's imprisoned inside the mind of another of a child yeah and and i it, it almost feels punitive for his for, for him trying to find success and expression through the fame and body of another person mm -hmm. which is interesting you know um so yeah, there's a lot of different things going on in this film. And and I still have not, you know, I think it would, I don't know if I would ever get myself to a point where I would be able to dissect it and articulate it perfectly. But I think that's, I mean, hey, that's Kaufman, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, exactly. That's yeah. Like you, you, you know, you look at his other movies again and you see, again, very similar themes and yet it, they're tough to predict and they're tough to, in their in their detail in the execution yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. exactly yeah well, which is and I, I i found out that he wrote a book and i don't know if you've heard of it i think it's called ant oh, really? kind that kaufman okay, wrote a book no, i think a couple of years ago yeah read it. so i'd be curious to i think i'm going to pick that up and and check it out and uh i've also kind of made a little bit of, of homework for myself to read his scripts because i'd be curious to see how you know? I'm always curious to see how scripts are translated by directors into the you know the final film that we get to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think especially with Kaufman, because again, I just feel like his stamp is so strong yes. um, uh, in this film that it that it it's just it almost feels kind of um, again I don't want to say overwhelming because that feels negative, but it's just so so significant. But mm -hmm. yeah, well I. 
hey, I, I guess that's that's where we'll probably wrap up uh, mm-hmm. this yeah. episode. Um, it's kind of one of those where it's like you don't have this this beautiful, perfect, articulate analysis of of the themes of the film. But again, that's kind of what I enjoy about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I I thank you as always, Cullen. Yeah, uh, me is Cullen. Me is Cullen. Me, me is, is Cullen. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> You maybe I'll edit that. It people have no idea what we're talking about. But maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll edit in like a snippet uh, as that. like a postscript or something yeah. after our sign off. But yeah. But hey, thanks again, Colin, for hanging with me and discussing the film. It's this as always, funny. it's a blast. And yeah. everybody out there listening, thanks for hanging in there with us. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the episode, and we will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Okay. Uh-oh. All right, man. Ready when you are. Yep. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Soldiers of Cinema podcast, episode 60. I am Woo-hoo. your host, as always, with my co-host, Cullen. Is me. I'm going to start that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. No, it's been a while. That.